Hello and welcome to Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming. In this video, we are unboxing and putting together the Scenari Cal Calathar. No, Cathalar. I've been pronouncing it the Calathar. It seems to roll off the tongue a little bit better. Um, but this is one of the latest models from the Lumineth Realm Lords. So I am very excited to crack this one open. So let's get into it. Let's see if we can actually get this open. There we go. It does involve a little bit of ripping and tearing but we'll get there because I'm not sure where the instructions are. Always, these boxes are, these blister packs are a pain to open, but we'll get there, there we go. Okay, out it comes. So it's a single sprue, and we'll get this thing out as well. And I've completely wrecked it, so let's just get rid of that plastic. Right, so we'll come back to the sprue in just a second. So we have here the instructions. Pretty straightforward to put together couple of bits here and there about 12 pieces so nothing overly difficult yeah, there's lots of little bits and pieces on here that will go together but that is fine and we also have the colors here as well um, mostly blues bit of purpley grays as well so that's it let's look at the sprue so a the size of that base that is a 32 millimeter base so a normal standard size for these kind of models and we'll bring up the sprue all the way so we can get a really good look. So there's a lot of detail on this model here. Um, we do have like the base, we'll turn that over and we'll have a look at the other side of that. The smoke that comes off, the body itself, um, a very nice base, which is super cool. Really with the Luminal Forum Lords, the, um, not so much the characters, but the elite models and characters, they really have some really fancy bases and some really good um, head pieces and that face piece is just amazing. So on the other side, you can see here, we we'll get that into view. Uh, there's a lot of coals in there. I think there's a few gems as well. And then the smoke comes off. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up and put this one together. Okay, we have all our tools here, uh, the models, the glues, everything we need, instructions. I've also got the camera in just a little bit closer. So if we get into a good position, if I can move my chair, we can crack on with this. So as always, let's move some stuff out of the way. So firstly, we need to get one, two, three, four. So you can see, we're gonna put the body together first and then you put the coal, cauldron shield thing there, then the head and then stick it together. So that's pretty straightforward. So I don't think this is gonna to be too fiddly at all. So what do we need? One, two, three, four. So let's have a look around. So obviously we need the bodies and the legs. So we can see the bodies there. The leg is... I always have trouble with the beginning bit it's there. So it's not quite a leg. It's more a bit of fabric. So we'll cut that up. I'm a little far away from the camera at the moment. So while I cut it up, um, I will be out of shot, but it's pretty straightforward. So I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing pretty good. I'm still recovering from my surgery. Um, so I'm somewhat taking it easy. I just wanted to put this model together. I love this model. Not as much as the Light of Altharion, but it's pretty good. So we've got one and two together, then we need three and four. So three is this weird um, necklace waist bit. Necklace waist bit, yeah, that goes. So this bit here, that goes across there. That's part three. So this one is fiddly. Um, I'll see if I can get in and do it on camera. So if I can focus in here, just here, there is a bit of a tassel. So you don't want to cut that off. And then, yeah, the rest is pretty straightforward. And I'll have to do that just out of shot. Um, definitely be careful with this piece. Oh, I just felt like that snapped. Um, yeah, it's very flimsy. And that's to do with the fact that there's a lot of tension on the, on the sprue built up that's coming from these points. So when you cut it, it sort of uh, releases that tension and sort of that these two bits can break off. So you've got to be careful when you do that and also when you put it together or um, trim down the lines and everything. So four is a little bit fiddly as well, but that comes out nice and easily. Okay, let's start off by cutting up, cutting off some of the sprue lines as you should do. Um, normally, I would always do this. I'm gonna do it fairly quickly because um, we're putting this together rather than trying to clean it up. But 
I always try to take my time when I do this. I'm only really concerned of bits I can't actually get to or will get in the way. Things. So things like on this arm, I know there's going to be a joint there. So it's better to trim it down as much and always have a new blade, obviously. Goes without saying. So please don't feel that I am skipping over parts because I'm definitely going to come back and clean it up. So I'm just looking through, trying to find little bits and pieces that I can either do now or later. Um, yeah, there are some old lines on, I guess, the bit of, I'm call it a chalice, let's call it that, um, the handle of the chalice that we can uh, ignore for now. And there's a few bits, if I can get it in shot. I'm still in the middle of moving my studio around, so I'm, every time I go to film, I have to reset everything. Um, okay, that's nice. Let's tidy that up a little bit there. Um, no mold lines there, so let's glue this part together, see if we can do it. Not too difficult, without any difficulty. So, for the foot, I'm just trying to figure out the best, how this actually goes together. So, we have a foot here. And where does this actually go? <laughs> um, this is actually a little confusing. So it obviously needs to go I'm just looking at the body trying to figure out which way it goes. I have a feeling it's a little confusing actually. There's a little notch just at the um the back side there. But I can't particularly see anything else. Oh, you know what, I'm an idiot. Oh my God, it goes on the bottom. Um, okay, this is why I'm tripped up. It's the angle of this. So the body is upright, but this is coming, seems to coming and going in upright as well. It's actually not, it's actually um, going in at that point there, but this point at the top is actually on the bottom. So we can see here, I thought it was going in like this, like that. If you can see that. I know there's a bit of shadow at the moment. I'm trying to do my best. Um, so you saw that it was going in like that, but it's not actually. It's actually going in like that. If I can actually get it in there without dropping it. It's upside down. That's why. Oh my goodness. I'm having a day. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but this is why I do these videos because uh, the instructions always aren't a bit clear. So the feet are actually next to each other, which I didn't think was the case. So that goes in there like that. You can see that's in focus. There we go, and we can take that out. So it's actually where this is vertical, um, the image on here should be horizontal. So something to look out for. So a little bit of glue, come on. Where's the, where's the glue at? I just got some glue out, okay. I'm having one of those days at the moment. Clean that up a bit. There we go. So yeah, a little fiddly, a little bit fiddly. Um, so it's just a matter of getting that in the right spot, and there we go. That slides in like that. Not a perfect fit, but you could definitely, with a bit more time and patience cleaning that line up, um, you can get it in there. But it's not too bad. I think with a bit of spray you won't even notice. Okay, so that bit took way longer than I intended. Let's clean up this bit. I am nervous about this little bit here. It's very fragile and flimsy, so we're going to see what we can do. I do want to tidy this up before I put it on the model. And I do have a sharp blade. If I can get this in camera. It is a bit difficult though, I'm not going to lie. I may just um, leave it and come back and fix that up. I'm not happy about that, but I think it's actually a little bit fragile, a bit too fragile. And this actually goes on pretty easily. So you have the triangular socket there and that goes over the top like that. So there's not actually anything that plugs in there, which is very strange, feels like there should be, but you do have a little bit on the top of the butt there and on the other side that um, goes in there. So you can see it goes in like that. So we'll put a little bit of glue there and on the side. So just a little bit there, a little bit there, 
a little tiny bit there. You don't need too much. This model is quite delicate. Okay, so that will glue in. So we still have access to all these particular points. I know there's a um, little bit of sprue markings on the top bit of that and then on the tassels as well. So yeah, I mean, if you take some time, you'll be able to clean that up without any issue, but it is a little delicate and um, physically doing it while on camera is actually a bit difficult because normally I would get that really close to my face and you can see every time I go to cut a bit, I take it way out of screen. So it is uh, somewhat difficult at the moment. And this piece itself is pretty clean. There are a few bits down here, which be super careful with. But like I said, we can always come back and fix up some of these pieces. So back to the instructions, this bit um, goes onto a joint bear, which I did clean up before because it was going to be problematic. And this slides right on. It is like a triangular socket and pin or peg type setup. So that will go on fairly easily if I can get the right angle. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera because it is really fiddly. Okay. So, um, yeah, there we go. It does slide in fairly easily. It's just getting in the right spot and there we go. Um, and don't use too much glue because you'll get it all over your fingers and all over the model, which I have done. So it actually ties into a necklace that is around the body. So it does require a little bit of fiddling to get it right, but there we go. All good. So we've got the first two steps done. Next up, we need the uh, chalice with the runes and the gems and the smoke and all kinds of stuff. So to build that, we need part six and seven, and that's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna cut that just out of frame. And where is it? Okay, so there's a little bit of smoke. It is a bit flimsy, but that's fine. And the rest of the smoke, which is the big uh, billowy bit. We need that. So we'll cut that out. Again, um, I don't need to trim any of this down at the moment. I'm going to stick it on, but yes, I would normally do it straight away. But we ought to get through this. So just looking around to see how this goes together. It's not perfectly clear how it does. So it's a little strange actually, how it's designed. I think they might've made a mistake on the um, design. You have a circular bit there. If I can bring it up, uh, there's a little circular bit there, which you can probably see. But on here, so it's a circular hole, but on here you have a square hole. Um, how does that work? I don't know. There is a little bit of sprue there just next to that that I've just taken off. I think that would make sense because it's going to be difficult to get to. But that's fine. This is what this is all about. It's about the experience of putting it together and my findings. So, um, let's think about this logically. So looking on the image, it looks like these edges go all the way to this end. So I'm just trying to see if it actually goes in. Okay, I can see. I just had to get a closer look. I was wrong, it is circular, but it's actually square on the outside, which will match this bit here. So a little strange why they just didn't have a full peg in there. I'm not 100% sure why that is. So for that one, I would put a little bit of glue into the smoke itself and that will go together very nicely. And you could put some glue for the other bits, but I don't actually think it's that necessary. So then it's just a matter of uh, finding it where it is. Come on. Here it is. Okay, once you get in there, it's fine. Yeah, you could put some extra glue sort of in that area there. Get that in focus. Is that focused? Yeah, just where all of those extra gems are that are coming off. And you can see there's bits of sprue on there, but they will come off later. Okay. Let's tidy up this arm a bit. No, I'm really hesitant to do this. I'm just going to be very gentle and soft with it. And this is where a new knife comes into play because that just goes through it fairly easily. There we go. Okay. And this will just um 
pop right on. So we don't need to worry about that too much. A little bit of glue. And you've got to get the angle correct. It is very much, has a correct angle. So this should, yeah. Yeah, it has a correct angle and it just goes right on. So you want to get it fairly flat and straight too. So you do have a little bit of room as you can see. Um, so what I recommend is try and match it up to the way that the dress is flowing. So it's a little bit further that way. Okay, so that will go there. Okay, that's gonna be a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna, just looking where I can rest this. So I'm gonna rest this off screen for now, simply because this will come off fairly easily until it dries. So I'm gonna lean that, I've got another model here. So I'm gonna lean that up against that model. Now we need to work on the head. So we need the top of the headdress and then the back of it, which joins together and that sticks on the front and then uh, we stick the face on. Oh, there it is. I was trying to look for it for the same color, but it's right there. Okay. So this is uh, eight, nine, and 10. So pretty straightforward. Oh, but before we do, we do have to remember I haven't put the hair on. Um, and I consciously left that off because it's going to be difficult to put on at the moment without knocking it off. So we're going to come back and probably do that at the end. I think. So we'll leave that on the sprue for now. So like I say in a lot of videos, uh, you don't have to follow the instructions directly. Sometimes they just don't 100% make sense. If you have the piece, generally with these kind of kits, because um, everything is very designed to go in together, you'll be okay. Um, it's sort of, it's a matter of interpreting the instructions. All right, and there's the face. Have a look at that face. Look at that design work. Focus, is it focusing? I think that's focus, I can't really tell, yeah. Might be a bit too dark to see. We'll see it when it's on the model, but that integration of the face and the cloth, oh, beautiful. Right, I'm gonna clean some of this up because I know some bits are gonna be difficult than others, but really, um, it's not too bad. You can get these off with some files and a few other bits and pieces, but it's mostly this piece in the middle that I think is gonna be problematic later. And because these are so delicate, you wanna be pretty careful. Like there's really not much holding on the gems here. So uh, just be wary of where you're holding it. Cause I have big dopey fingers. I always seem to knock stuff off. And this piece looks fine but I just want to tidy up that end there. And this bit here. So this bit can be messy because it's a join. So it's not too bad. And the rest, it looks fine. We can come back and deal with some stuff later. Like there really is no mold lines on there, which is very nice. And then the face. So it's a bit of an awkward spot because it's on the chin. So you're definitely gonna to want to clean that up and be pretty gentle with it. Okay, that should be fine. Let's have a good look at that. Not amazing, but we can deal with that at a later point. There we go. Nice and easy. All right. So we'll bring this lady back. That seems to have... Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty solid now. It's pretty cool. All right. So the face. Bring the instructions back in. What we need is... Putting the front and the back together. So these two bits here, which is the back of the head and then the bit that goes over over the top, we can put those together. So there should be a little mark here. Yep, so there's a little socket joint there. Right there, if you can see it. We'll focus, I can't tell if it's focused or not. It's really difficult at the moment. Yeah, so there's a little socket joint there and that will go in just like that. So we'll clean that up a bit. And just a little, tiny little, oh, it's probably a bit too much glue, but it's not too bad. Okay, so that's gonna go together. I want that to dry quickly. So I'm just gonna hold it in and press it down. Cause you do want it to be straight and it looks pretty straight. Yeah, and, and be careful with the amount of glue. You don't need too much glue there. And this goes onto the back of the head. So looks like there is, yeah, there's two little sockets. Um, 
don't know if you can see it on the back of the head, if I can get it into focus, please. Um, there's two little joints there that will go in and they match on the back of his head here. So, tiny little bit of glue. There we go. And you just touch it and enough glue's there. So, let's just make sure this matches up properly. There we go. It's a little fiddly. Um, so it's part of their hair and part of the headdress. So it is slightly difficult to see because of so much shadow. I really need to come fix the lights up. I'm not quite sure why there's so much shadow today. So that's in there. That's going to come in nicely, nicely, nicely. And then we can put the face on. So let's stick that face on straight away. Um, and this is just going to glue right in without any problem. So, and you want to make sure you get it right. So this is going to be quite fiddly. It sort of goes in upside down, back to front a little bit. Um, if you have smaller fingers than me, it'll work. And I think, yeah, I'm pushing the face and the mask together. Let's have a look. So it's a little bit more on that side. It's quite fiddly to get in there. It might even be worth not putting the bowl on um, before the face. I thought that may have been an issue, but I think it'll be fine. So there's a little line there that you can see. Yeah, and you can see like that little bit of sprue there. It's going to be a bit difficult to deal with, but it'll be fine. Okay, so that's in there. That seems to be working fine. Finally, something. Ah, the hair. I was wondering what that um, mark there was for. I forgot about the hair. So let's get the hair out now and get that out of the way. So this hair goes in the step before, but I wanted to leave that out because it was a little bit, um, it was gonna get in the way, but that's fine. And I think if you put the hair in, it'll probably push everything together. And there may be a reason why it's in this part of the um, instructions, which I think we will discover very quickly. I think there's a little bit that's meant to go in. Sorry, it's not on screen, I just need to get a little bit closer to my face so I can see it. Okay. So look around, see how this goes in. I'm trying to keep it out of the shadow, I'm not quite sure. So that actually goes underneath. Ah, that's no problem. That's not much of an issue. That's why the head at the back looks a little strange. It looks like there's something missing because there is. There is hair missing. All right. So if you have more, not as uh, flimsy fingers as I do, this should go in without any problem. There we go. And that just sits in there. And what you could do, if you do choose to do the hair at step three, glue that in and you can actually then glue down the back of the head to that as well. But I didn't really, honestly, I didn't really see the point. There we go. So if you flip it around that way, um, you can see that there's mm, the peg's gone now. So there was a peg in there before. So, but not anymore. So that's good. All good. We're getting there. Now we've just got to build the base. So the base, the last two bits, 11 and 12, pretty straightforward. I love the Lumineth bases. Like their use of the wheat and the old stone. Yeah, I love it. It's really cool. So I'm not going to uh, clean this up too much, except for the base bit, because that needs to be flush on the bottom. Okay, and that bit there. And that bit, just trimming a little bit off. I don't particularly mind about being too rough at this stage, because you will put some extra basing material on here. If I ever get around to painting these. So just do a quick test fit, make sure it's in the right spot. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't even really matter too much. I don't need too much glue, just enough to seal it in because this glue, if you don't know about this glue, it welds, it melts the plastic and bolts it together. So there we go. Easy does it. So we're gonna put this straight on the base. Doesn't matter whereabouts on the base you put it. There we go, it's on the base. Move it around so it's a bit, oops, 
like there. Actually, this kind of does. The way the model is posed, um, it does matter. So, looks like the way it's designed, it's like this direction here, and then the model sits on it like that. If that makes sense. And you do have a peg, two holes actually. Let's see if we can get this to line up properly. It would help if I actually let it glue down first. <laughs> Um, I'm just looking around trying to figure out the best direction here. Okay, so it'll make sense once it goes in. When you look at it, it makes sense. It just, according to the instructions, you don't see the pegs that are on the feet. There's two pegs, but they will go in without any issue. There it is. And you, it just slots right in there without any problem. I say that and, and she falls off, but yeah. Okay, and you just need to hold that in. These are very delicate models. So you can see it just, you really got to weld it in there or it's just not going to stay on like that. just completely falls off. That's okay. We can come back and fix it up. If I can actually get it on correctly. Oh my goodness. So it goes like that there. <laughs> this is actually really difficult. You know what might be the best case for this is to work backwards. Um, because you've got to be super delicate once you have it. There we go. Okay, it's found its spot. Took a little bit, but it found it. So that's in there. Um, it could be better to work upwards. So this is sort of working downwards. So on the instructions, you put the body together, add all the bits of the body, and then put it on the base. What would probably be better? Build the base first, do the body, and then add everything to it. Simply because you have, when you're gluing this down, you just have to be super delicate because there's so many bits around there so I don't really even know where to grab but what I'm going to do I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in there because you're not going to see that and that will weld down so there we go I'm pretty um, happy with that it's kind of cool but what I'll do this is still a bit wet so I can push the stone forward I just want to get her more in the middle of the base there we go that's better if you look at the front um, She's definitely more angled to the side of the base, but I feel that it's a little bit better if she's more central. Not too much more central. I don't want her right in the middle, but she's right there. Okay, that's it. So let's move this camera down and we will have a look at it because we want to get some better views right here. We also have we can match it up and we have some other um, little muzzle models here and there as well. So here we go. The Sonari Cathalar. Very, very nice model. Although she is falling out of her spot, so we do have to be careful. I'm just going to push her back in. There we go. Yeah, you can see she's falling out. So let's put her in her place. Just putting a lot of pressure on there. I can't do it on camera because it's in the way, but we'll get the idea. There we go. Let's actually bring this all the way down so we can get a real good shot. There we go. Look at that. It is really nice. A um, lot of detail. Like this is gonna be an amazing one to paint, particularly for that face, how the cloth works its way into the face. Amazing base, and you can add some more stuff to that, like some grasses, a um, bit of sand on there, some extra rocks. I think that'd be really cool. So I can pull it around without knocking the camera. You can see that that fabric at the back is fairly exquisite. Big long braid. Yes, there are some things I need to clean up, but we know about that. Um, and then we look at the coals there. We'll zoom in. So it's not just coals, it looks like it's got a lot of gems and things in there too. So that's really cool. So what we'll do, we will line it up against the Light of Eltharion. We can see, if I knock the camera away, um, she's almost really, almost the same height. Um, of course, the Light of Eltharion is not standing up fully, but you know, look at those bases. Really, really nice. So yeah, there we go. Two of these characters. We get the light out of the way. Focus on the uh, Cathalar. Very nice. Um, Fiddly to build, a little bit fiddly, but I think if you start from the base, 
then go to the body and then the extra bits instead of how the instructions are, which is the body, the extra bits, and then the base. I think you'll be fine. But yes, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. It's going to be great to paint. There's lots of things you can do here. Yeah, really good. All right. Well, there we go. Took about 25 minutes to build. Very, very nice. So if you do like these builds, definitely let me know by subscribing, hitting that bell notification, and also leave a comment and like and share and all that stuff that you meant to say. All right. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.